to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. James, what's your favorite store in the world? What's your favorite grocery store in the world? Grocery store? Yeah. Whole Foods. Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain to me why at a Whole Foods everybody treats the parking lot like we're in a like a third world country? What do you mean? Driving in there, the anger, the rage, the desperation, it's as if like they're going to run out of food Oh yeah. Something happens and and ours here has I don't know, maybe 10, 15 cars in it, right? Yeah. I, I got the old like I'm I'm coming out of the parking lot. There's a million open spots there. Like a million. I got the old <laughs> What what'd you do? I just pulled out. I just pulled out like into the street. Like uh-huh. she was clearly going to turn in and get a parking spot. Right. And I was just like, "Meh." Who cares, right? Uh-huh. Like, no big deal. Uh-huh. She was in some race for death against time or mm-hmm. uh, maybe it was the, the time of day that I went in because they switched the hot bar from breakfast to lunch. Mm-hmm. She lost the shit inside of her body. Again, rich white lady, you know, uh, right. we, we talked about rich white ladies all the time. This is another example of it where it's just like you're ruining it, right? And I did something... That I've never done before when like, you know, usually give like a polite wave or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're like, oh, maybe I cut you off or whatever. I know I didn't cut this fucking lady off. Mm -hmm. It was 800 spots there. Um, So I just I I gave a shrug like this and like because we were like window to window and she like passed by me real slow to be like, hey, you know what you did. And I just looked at her and I go. (laughs) (laughs) Just like that. And like I gave that little laugh and she was so shocked by it that it was like, I think it kind of brought her back to reality of like, hey man, we're at Whole Foods right now. Right. Like Whole Foods. We're not in Russia waiting for the last sack of potatoes to be delivered, you know, for the neighborhood. We're at fucking Whole Foods in Wilmington, North Carolina. Like you're good. I'm good. Everybody's fine today. Everything's going to be fine today. Hmm. I, I don't, I just can't wrap my mind around what it is about that place that like people are on edge. Like they are just getting their push to the brink there in the parking lot of Whole Foods. They're just like, ah. so here's what it is. Um, and I've had more like fights and more kind of uh, situations like that in Whole Foods and Trader Joe's than anywhere else. Mostly liberal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. White. Yes. Normally. Sure. Just going to say majority. Uh-huh. Um, and you have to be, you know, with that demographic, you have to be very delicate. So it's, and so <laughs> when you, when I'm backing out, like I have to make sure that nobody's even close. Right. To even walking because it'll be like, oh, yeah. you know, they like. Yeah, that, oh, that, that was the when reaction. When you clearly I, see I got the person her. pulling out, yeah, and you could stop your body, sure, because you're walking, you can see them, and they just—it's this thing they love to be like offended. I just so I need to be so much like I need to be so much more delicate there than let's say Food Lion, where I yeah. like I pull out somebody's like it's cool, Food. it's cool, no worries, coming in, everyone's just. Kind of doing their thing, getting, they see someone coming, they stop, they, you know. Food line, you just, could kill a dude. Like, you could kill a dude and it'd be like, eh, right. all right, I guess, man. So I was Probably getting right my away. kids out of the car and there was a car that parked that, I mean, you're parked pretty close and I have to get like a carrier out. Right. And it was like, open the door and I was getting the carrier out and it kind of just like, I mean, it went over the tiniest bit, right? Tink? Yeah. Not like Tap a, the door. Not a big like thing, but t- the guy gets out. Yeah. He's in there in the cell phone. People are always sitting as well in their cars. They're either waiting for someone or using Wi-Fi. I don't know what they're fucking doing, but they're always sitting in their car. He gets out, like sees me like struggling with the kids. Rubs. He goes, oh, are you sorry? And I was like, 
I mean, no. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's like, oh, okay, it's okay then. And I'm like, oh, okay. Did you have the baby out at that point? Yeah, uh-huh. had the baby out. You know, if I would have been there, how great that would have turned out. Oh, totally. Had the baby out. I'm carrying the thing. Close the door. He gets out, rubs. Older guy looks rich as shit. Sure. Older guy. Not the nicest car. It wasn't a fucking Benz or anything. It was just it was like Bugatti. an Audi or something, right? right? Like a douchey, rich, Whole Foods guy car. Yeah. Oh, so are you sorry? Not really. Like, no. There's no fucking mark. I mean... I would be like, oh, it's cool. I was just checking. I mean, it's cool. I was just checking. If, That's me. If right? I was there, if I was there with you, can you imagine? I would have sent you guys into the store and taken and, a shit on his hood right yeah. in front of him. It was like that. Like Bent he was over just and such fully a dumped out douche, douche. Apple milkshake, the whole thing. And I then, might have had you go and then into he was Whole Foods inside, yeah, and, and get me kale, some, some kale, a bowl of kale. Yep, and I would eat it as fast as I can, mm-hmm. and then just shred yeah. all over his window. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm talking like it looks like fucking Bill Paxson in in Twister, where it's just there's so much debris that you don't right. know what's going on through the. Front and it was like I'm saying, it wasn't like a slam. I had already opened it to like thing. I'm like making sure, okay, it's good. Getting the kid out, it kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moved a little bit. Yeah. Oh, fuck him. Uh, it happens. You know what I'm saying? It happens, but I'm saying there, you're right. It's just you have to be so delicate. Everybody's I see so people angry. coming and I have to like stop and like wait a half an hour for them to walk in front of my yeah. car because if I go at all, it's a thing of like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I'm walking here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cars shouldn't even be allowed in the world. <laughs> I'm in Whole Foods, right? Carbon footprint as they walk out to their car, right? So this woman People caught me. People just go crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She caught me at a nice time where it was just like uh, the new, the, like the latest two Boney Bear songs just dropped. The sure, new ones, and you know. You're calm and so, chill. Because well, with Apple Music, you get back into the car and it's con- it's connected to Wi-Fi already or Bluetooth right. or whatever. And it so th- that was already on. You know, happy, fucking depressing song. And I just looked at her and I was like. Chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is the best. Uh, yeah. I wish and, I could uh, always give those kinds of but it was responses. Just like a, which, uh, it was like Draymond uh, Green being, I mean, thinking geez. he got fouled. Just like, uh, where the opposite is at Chick fil A. Chick fil A. Now, Chick fil A is a goddamn. Now, you that runs like a third world country, right? Where it's. It, it, you, you think that a fucking tsunami is coming and you've got to get all the food out of there. There's two lines. You've got to wrap around. You've got to drive around the parking lot and then get towards the back of the back Mm -hmm. and then be wait to wave through Mm -hmm. for that one thing. But yet everybody's polite. You know, the drill at Chick-fil-A, everybody's doing what they should be doing. Oh yeah. And I think it's falling in line. Very military magic of Chick-fil-A is you know that you're waiting for Jesus chicken, essentially, at that point, right? And no mistakes. Yes. I've no never had mistake. one mistake there. Nobody's pissed. You know, you go to the line, you're like, well, you almost feel like it's your fault. I came at the wrong time. I don't even check the bag. No. Because they get it right every time. Every time. Uh, well, the, I went maybe two weeks ago, took the boy there. Um, the computer was down, and she was, you know, working on it. She was like, um, she was like I'm sorry, this will be back up in a minute. I was like, ah, no worries. And she goes... No, no, no! It's free. You can just take your meal and go. It's our, it's our mistake. It's a f- you know, fucking twenty dollar meal that I yeah. picked up for the children. Yeah, and I was like, "Way to go, Chick Fil A, Whole Foods!" Not only do they take your entire paycheck, which is obviously why they call it Whole Paycheck, mm-hmm. but then the people are fucking cucks in there. Yeah, just cucks. Just a bunch of cucks walking yeah, around. I guess we are all cucks, right? We're yeah. just like. Wanting it, we want I, to you, be. You feel like you're at Outside Lands Fest in San Francisco. Like everybody's just, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, but that, that's what I feel at Whole Foods. Even on the other side of the country, I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck entitles you to that? Your fucking shrugs and uh, right. I don't know what I'm doing Why don't you fucking kill yourself? Whatever you did, you're just like, yo, man. Yeah. Like, this is the real world, Holmes? Yeah. I'm getting out and fucking beating your ass, but right. it's not. We're at Whole Foods, so yeah. you let it slide. Because somehow you know p- pulling in there of the snideness of that place, and you're like, eh, I'm expecting a little snark, a little attitude from at least two two people in there. Mm-hmm. Um, 
That's why I grab handfuls of shit at the fucking hot bar, pop it in my mouth and don't pay for it. Do you? Yeah, it's just kind of it's kind of my way back of like giving back. Mm, Today take was the, take the guy out of food lion. Take the, you can't take the, the food lion out. The, of the deal guy. was this: like I, I'll grab like a little handful of uh, those little uh, garlic sticks, okay. sesame seed sticks. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, they're about a, an inch long. Mm-hmm. Pop a few of those guys, maybe sure. eight of those guys in my mouth, and that's kind of my way back at them of like, okay, get fucked. You feel like we're even now? Yeah, like because of the snark and everything that I've got to put up with. Oh yeah, eh, we're even. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm gonna get a few dirty looks from somebody. Yeah, uh, yeah. What you know, when I walked in this morning, hair was wet, summer swayzy and full of fact, obviously, and uh, I was in no mood for that bullshit. Mm-hmm. So whatevs. Mm-hmm. Popped eight of those sesame sticks in my mouth. That really put a. Uh, a frown upside down, you know, in this old dome. That's just me. It's my life. Um. <laughs> what did you say? Smollett? No, I said that's just me. It's my life. Oh, it's your life. It's yeah, my that's life. just it's my It's my life. life. But you're right. It, it's, it's, a, it's a weird liberal thing. And like, I, no matter what you say about the fucking Trump people or whatever, right? They're fucking white trash Walmart people or whatever they always say, right? Mm-hmm. Liberals are the angriest and like it's always like the angriest, most violent, like fuck you, yeah, fuck you, dude, yeah. Um, and uh, or just I, I'm I, saying, Kanye just, pointed that out when he was on Letterman to, the other night. Yeah, you um, just he, have to be the most delicate with them. That's what I mean. Uh, what's his nuts? Uh, Letterman, David Letterman was going on a tirade about Trump and the people and the supporters and all that shit. And uh, Kanye was like, "Hey, man, have you actually seen what li- like liberal supporters are?" He's like, "It's all violence." He goes, "Every time I wear a hat out or something," he goes. People are literally like, fuck you, I want to I want to beat your ass and, yeah. and all of this shit. Yeah. And he's just like, dude, that, that never happens on the, on this side because nobody really cares. Right. Um, and I feel like it's that way at Whole Foods, too, where it's just like, man, shouldn't you be out like helping a homeless person or whatever the fuck you claim that you like to do? I feel that way in Ojai, too. Like just driving around Ojai. I have to be, like I said, you stop, you stop way before. Right. Don't let anyone, you know, you see a, someone at a crosswalk a mile away yeah. and you've got to like stop. Make sure they cross because you'll get the whole, uh, uh, slow down. I mean, come on, right? Yeah. That whole thing, like, because there's something about being rich and liberal where you really, um, you're never in a, you're not in a hurry, right? So the whole thing of like slowing down or, What's what's the big deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the big deal is? I got to go to fucking work, bro. Got to go to work, yeah. dude. And so, well, in instances like that, when I'm driving by, like a uh, somebody on the side of the road, you know, whatever, and they they give me that old thing of like mm-hmm. the, I the, the walkway, the right. right away. It's like I'm already going fifty, bro. I'm not gonna slow. I'm not gonna slam to a halt so you can gingerly walk across. And that's um, what I love about New York is the idea that like if you do do that, yeah, you're actually gonna fuck shit up yeah yeah yeah. so like you know people bike messengers and cars and all of this they want you to just go if you see an opening go go if you just have go. a little bit of space just go yeah don't do this whole uh, 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 then they go like i've had a bike like way back in the day be like just go do you know what i mean like yeah. i i can see where everyone's looking at the flow yeah, yeah, yeah and you just sort of figure out your holes to go it's not this like hey oh Oh, 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 should I, should I, should you? Then there's a fucking crap and ev- all the cars and bikes right. and everything are crashing into each other. Just everyone take casualties. care of yourself. See, if you see a car pulling out, you stop. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you see people, you stop. It's just, you just be. She got me in a good day today. That's all I'm going to say. She can thank Bon Iver for that because usually it would have been, you know, a series of cunts followed by get fucked in the rain with no lube like a lot of things like that sure pedestrians like when someone a pedestrian does that shit on the side of the road Mm -mm. i'm praying my windows down just so i can get the old side swipe fuck you dickhead yeah yeah you know like yeah because i know that travels and you're like ah man yeah got that got that last dickhead in there i am a dickhead made my day better made my day better Mm -hmm. uh you know what made my day better yesterday was uh john stewart did you see this i did in front of congress it was awesome Mm -hmm. um the fact that John Stewart had to go before Congress and ask for more funding for the 9-11. It's every five years they have to do this shit. I didn't know that. Well, they keep trying to just like, de- you know, it's Say, something hey, it's up for, it. you know, it's up for review every five years of what they're going to, you know, funding wise, what they're going to give. And they have to keep coming. 
every five years, Jesus and that's what Christ. he's I hope pissed I, about. That thing went massively viral and was covered everywhere. And like, yeah. not only was his speech polite, smart, and thoughtful, um, it, it was well deserved. Usually, celebrities come in, they'll bitch about like you know some art thing in your, in your right. rich ass neighborhood. Where Can we just fund like, the museums? They're like. No. no, we can't because you're funding a museum in Monterey, which yeah. is already rich enough. And yeah. you guys are we going to put another $50, $50 million Van Gogh in there? Right. Like, come on. For this, like, this was awesome. Uh, it, all, it also made me miss Jon Stewart. I haven't seen him in a while. I know. And that guy is still as sharp as they come. Yeah. He could. I had this, I had this conversation with a friend of mine last night after, um, after watching this because he saw the same clip. And. To me, that's a guy who could probably run and have a decent shot because he is thoughtful. I think so, yeah. Uh, he, won't, he won't do it. He will never no, run for president. He's not but, an idiot. Uh, yeah. Well, he could make change. I think this thing is going to go through. I really do after this. Now, what there's too thing? much heat. Uh, I think this funding will go through. Well, yeah, it, and you know it does, but it, what the main thing of it is why do we have to keep coming back and fight for it? You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. So they want it to be something where... It's just across the board, right? Why was he chosen? Do you know that? Chosen is just a cause that he uh, is passionate about. But to, to come before Congress takes some, doesn't it take like an invite or something like that? No, I think anybody, I, don't know that world very well. I think anybody that for whatever cause they put the person forward that they want, right? Where it's like uh, just gotcha. recently they were trying to get more regulations on baby products, skin products, and they put out Courtney. Kardashian and like mm. had her speak and the 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 fund itself chose her got it so he has made documentaries and is famously uh really involved with this cause and has been for a long time so it was sort of you know fitting and uh it's great good for him man yeah and you know they these these charities funds these movements whatever choose people that will actually make a difference right if you hear them yeah, and I think this one did, but um, again, I mean, I hope. Yeah, I, the funny thing about it was so so that explodes, goes viral. Everybody's talking about it, and then today, like when when I watched the clip, I was like, man, there's not there's not that many people there. Um, and I was like, who sits who sits in for this? Like, mm. I, again, I don't know much about that world. Um, and ironically, this morning he blasted Congress for the low attendance at the yeah. hearing. Like, I, I guess it was Congress and they weren't even there. And I was just like. Right. And they, they were and then they left and came back. And it was just, you know, it was just like they didn't care. They don't, they don't really do anything for us. No. That's why whenever anybody bitches about the president or Congress or the House of Representatives, and they're like, oh, man, f- fuck who they were in there. Fuck Trump. Fuck all these people. These people don't give a shit about us. Right. Like either side. You're not, you're not sitting in for a 9-11 funding hearing. Mm. What do you got to do? What do, you, right. what do you have to do that day in D.C.? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not reading these fucking bills either. Yeah. You're just kind of voting the way you should. Yeah. Some, you got an assistant reading this stuff, mm-hmm. and then you're like, all right, cool. What's the bullet points? Red, check, sign, Well, a lot boom. of the times they just get told how, which, which way to vote is in their party, right? So it's like, yeah. so if you're a Republican, you have someone that reads it and just tells you which way you're supposed to go. Sure. Unless it's something you really give a shit about, but crazy man. Uh, either way, I, I think I think because of the clip, and that's pretty much what it is these days with with uh, not only media, but but um, you know a lot of these campaigns is if you can get a clip just to go viral, and that will make the difference. I know talk shows are doing it because mm. um, they're having a hard time with ratings. The late night talk shows now it's all about the viral clip the next day with Kimmel and uh, Fallon and those guys right? for, you know, Corden sketches and things like that. Like those clips are making more money for the company than, you know, the actual shows are now or you're right. just like, Whoo. cause that like on our, on our YouTube page, we're doing clips now mm. and that's for that exact reason where yeah. it's just like, all right, cool. Here's a little two minute refresher course of what happened today. Uh, we did that CBD thing the other day. Yeah. So we, we we do clips like that all the time, but that's what it is. You get one of these things to go, and then boom. Yeah. Uh, you're good to go, and I think John Stewart's good to go on this. Uh, I want to jump into this Euphoria show on HBO. Okay. You know that I was talking about it. 
Oh yeah, Zendaya. She's uh, whatever kick she's on about making herself look unattractive and shit. Like, I think she wants to be taken serious. A serious actress. Yeah, that's kind of what it is for girls, right? She was Disney, right? Yeah. So it's sort of the Miley Cyrus. Uh, formula although she's not going that far that way but she's definitely just not wearing makeup not wearing makeup and getting real getting real hood yeah 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 and uh in just trying to get away from her disney persona which jesus christ that's got to be hard i i would imagine yeah, zach efron's had a, a a tough time with it for years and years but uh coke helps yeah, it does and it does until it doesn't it does know? until it doesn't and he that's a, so true he had a problem <laughs> with coke he, he, he I didn't, to to i've never coke. heard about anyone having an issue with no, that uh, no 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 easy supplement? drug easy with that drug supplement dude. yep he goes in smooth no one's ever had a problem with it <laughs> no but on the new show so people were bitching about it two weeks ago because it, it just started getting reviewed mm-hmm. where they said it's it's gonna show you know the way teens really are graphic teen sex drugs all that stuff okay so, I mean, pretty much you're describing kids, I guess, right? That's what I thought from the reviews because the show doesn't air yet. Right. It hasn't aired. It's just out to critics and people reviewing it. Um, there, there was one thing that popped out on me in this new review that made me real jealous because you know I love male nudity a lot. Okay. Put it in a lot of projects because I find it hilarious and awesome. Sure. And I also am trying to bridge the divide between men and women Nudity on screen. Okay. You know, um, I think it should be equal. Mm-hmm. I want to see more dicks. I want to see more dicks in my face. Right, danglers. Uh, yeah. Nothing makes me laugh harder. They said there's 30 penises in one episode, and I'm just reading that verbatim right now, in, in, a, in an episode of Euphoria, which if we're going that route, there's no reason they shouldn't make At Night She Cries while he rides the steed and... Uh, when oh. Darkness Falls is going to catch it into, into a TV show. Yeah, It's that all would, dicks and nudity. Like, there would be 32, I think, in an app. Uh, maybe an more. App. Yeah. Maybe more. Probably more. Man, uh, but 30 dicks. Now, I, now <laughs> I'm in. Now I'm all in on this show. I don't know anything about it. Right. You know, all I knew was it was the, the, the non-attractive Zendaya, that, that right. side of her. You know? That side of her. Yeah, because when she dolls up, she's a cute girl. Yeah, totally. Um, but the non-attractives and die, and I was like, meh, do I really want to get into this? Now there's 30 dicks in one episode. Yes, please. All in. Sign me up. <laughs> I can't, right? can't get that on fast enough. Right. Okay. So. We'll check it out. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. You to know? 30 dicks. HBO is still HBO to me. They're still, they're still gangbanging in the 80s. Oh. Like, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think they don't do anything horrible. I, I can't remember a shitty show on there. And, uh, you know, even with, we were talking about Deadwood, the movie, I liked it. And, totally. And, and it, it was well made. It looked made great. It was just, you know, awesome. 10 years. Yeah. It was hard for me to, yeah. to catch up with shit. But like, uh, you know, obviously Game of Thrones and Sopranos and all that stuff. Dude, we watched the season premiere of Big Little Lies. That's back. And that was. Awesome. Yeah. They just do it right. Meryl Streep and her weird teeth. Her weird teeth and her whole. God, she's. It's very, she's so... bordering on Mrs. Doubtfire in this season, but. She's making a real meal of it. Yeah. Every scene. And you know they're going to give her every award, too. Oh, they'll give her every award. They give her way too much screen time. (laughs) All those little weird speeches and moments. They really stay on her. Yeah. For for just a couple beats too long. Yeah. But it's Meryl. It's Meryl. I'm not going to buy into the hype. I want to see more end kids, you know? Nicole Kidman's. Um, Tits. Yeah. She had her tits out in like every episode last year. Yeah, this now episode, we're like not going to see it. First episode in, we got no tits. There's um, not going to be as many tits, I feel like, just because there's not yeah, those Meryl's crazy You can't have a scene sex where... Scene. Yeah, or uh, there was like random shower scenes with Nicole Kidman's tits that were rad, and you were just like, all right, cool, thanks for that. Right. But with, with Meryl Streep on the, on the thing, I, get, I guarantee the writers toned it down where they were like, we can't have any tits out in front of Meryl. Meryl has rules. Put your tits away in front of Meryl. Don't you know she's won like 20 Oscars? You can, you can put your tits away. And Meryl's just let her, let her do whatever she asks for, whatever wig, whatever teeth. Yeah. Just give it to her. 
She's the master. Mrs. Doubtfire. Imagine they don't question anything no. that she does. She was giving me a lot of Doubtfire in that, that uh, season premiere. Right. Um, hello, dear. Hello, hello, dear. Hello, dear. <laughs> I'm a fan, though. I like that show. For sure. And I'll even go along with Meryl, even though I there's an eye roll every time yeah, I same. see her same. on the fucking screen. Yeah. But I'll go with it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with it because I'll get caught up. Like I watch. I will say this. Like She's as a husband, good. I'm pretty good of of watching shit with you. Where it's just like, mm-hmm. all right, cool. If you want to watch shit, like you were the one who wanted to watch The Big Little Lies, and uh, the show was is killer. Like, yeah. Great, great show. Um, the one that I'm into now, like I'm all in, I'm invested in is, is the bachelorette now. Oh, are you? Yeah, You've yeah, gone yeah. far enough. We've weeded out the little no- nobodies, right? The little dumb, dumb nobodies. <sighs> and now we've got our, our front runners, right? We've we got, got our got... front runners and like, you know, I'll, I'll usually catch this with you. Sometimes I'm into it. Sometimes I'm not. Mm-hmm. Um, the last one, uh, who was that dude? Colton. Yeah. You never really got on board with that one. Not fully all in where it was just like, all right, cool, man. Uh, but this one, Hannah B, I, I mean, I mean she's, she's funny. Like, I enjoy her shit. She seems like a real genuine person to me. Mm-hmm. No, you, yeah, you're not, you're not buying that. Ugh. Yeah. Ronk. I think you're wrong. There's things that annoy you about her. She just, there's. She overpronounces pronounces words. Her G's. Yeah. Well. Jeez. So, g- give one for the audience. I was just thinking about, I how just need wrong. To, how wrong every, that, yeah, that, that, especially, and there's, especially there's some, there's some, uh, disconnect. There was some kind of learning disability. There was something She's from Alabama. Yeah. There's, what do you there's, expect? there's something going to be in that past. Give her a pass. She's trying hard and, uh, she's doing her best out there. I don't really need to give people passes on The Bachelorette. That's like the whole point no, of the show. I think you, you just do. pass. I think you do. Uh, I'm gonna you get... just pass on them. You're not allowed to have any red flags. You need to be perfect. I'm into it. With or Hannah. else I, I'm out. I'm, I'm into it with Hannah B. Like I, she seems like a real one. Like whereas most of these just don't. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, who... I think you like how promiscuous she is. I mean, no, that she was surprising. She is a little... Yeah, she's she, always like that. She was just making out. She's like dudes an over sexualized. It, that baby. happens. That's well, she's 23. So she's 23. Yeah. She's like 23 or 24 years old. She looks older. <laughs> she does not look older. Yeah, I'll, she I'll, does. What, is, what are you ballparking there? I thought for she was 26. Her? Yeah. All right. That's fine. Give it a go. You look it up. I'm going to get into the sponsors real quick. Do it. Do it. Jabraham Lincoln. Do it. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Uh, subscribe to the show on YouTube uh, because you'll understand why the link is, is ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. We're combining channels on YouTube. We're in the process of that right now. Alec is doing that. Proud of you out there, Alec. Uh, you're doing it. You're doing it. You're combining the channels. We have a media company. And ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is our chief sponsor for both shows for the entire upcoming year. And we couldn't be more stoked about it. Uh, if you're military first responder, 15% off forever. Bottom of the page, boom. They know you need a good mattress. It's one of the most important things in this life. The ghost pillows are amazing. The sheets. They usually give something uh, free away every single month. This, this, uh, this month, it's the, it's the cover. It's the cooling cover on the mattress. It's, it's also the, the mattress waterproof. protector. Yeah. It protects the mattress. It's waterproof. So that way, you know, when you move in a couple years and you pull up those sheets for the first time and you see 80 yellow stains and a little bit of, little bit of period blood on there. Uh, at least you're not going to be embarrassed in front of the movers because you got a you got a cover on it, you know. You got a you got a Camaro out in the garage, um, you know. You got to put a cover you on gotta it. Cover it up, buddy. You got T tops and you can't find them anymore. You got to put a little tarp over it. I get it. Ghostbed.com forward slash Drinking Bros knows that too. Uh, right now, as always, they're giving a a, a special special deal. Special, special deal on their bundle packages. They got the, the adjustable bases, the Craftmatics there. Nice. Uh, $7.99. 
pillows, sheets, bed, graphmatic, boom. You can be uh, working and then jerking in no time. Maybe that's a new slogan for ghost bed. Working and jerking. Yeah. You know, you go to work, come home From and jerk. work to jerk. <laughs> Right from day to night outfit from work to jerk. How does that work at work? Though? Yeah, so you know, from work to jerk, dude. You go to work, <laughs> come home, throw down, spread eagle. You can go spread eagle jack on that thing. Uh, Thirty six months, no interest. Pay as you go program. Best in the biz. Ghostbed dot com forward slash drinking bros. Get it now. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy dot com. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Uh man, Strike Forces, I'm I'm seeing them pop up everywhere now. They they're doing live feeds with like grill your ass off and shit. Like I didn't know you could combine things on Instagram. Uh so strikeforceenergy.com was on Instagram last night mm-hmm. with like another company. They yeah. partner up with a lot of companies and do shit all the time, man. They're always doing awesome shit. Probably because it's the best in the business. Man, I talked to Gunnar Peterson yesterday. Celebrity trainer yes. Gunnar Peterson. He's gonna be on the show as a guest on uh, Drinking Bros. And you know what? He's d- d- dead serious. He was like, yo, man, have you ever had Strike Force? He goes, I drink uh-uh. that shit all the time. Yeah. That's awesome. And he gives it to all his players. And he's like, dude, this is the only thing that keeps me going. He's like, no carbs, no sugars. And I was like, no, I get it, man. But it was weird hearing Gunnar Peterson say it. Right. And I was like, and asking if you've heard of it. Yeah. I was like, That's dude, awesome. they're a sponsor. Like, they're fucking awesome. Yeah. And he's just like, I might have heard of them. Yeah. 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 So we were, we were talking about sponsors and all that other stuff. And he's like, dude, they're the best. Um, so for real, uh, that was out of Gunnar Peterson's mouth too. Um, and again, he'll be here uh, on the show in the next couple weeks on drinking bros, grape, lemon, orange, orange. and then orange. It's very Hannah. A ronk. Orange. Orange. I, I should pronounce all of it. Lemon. Lemon. Mm-hmm. Um, grape. A ridge. Uh, go get it. Strikeforceenergy.com. 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. Again, no carbs and sugars. You can pour that right in a liquor and fucking enjoy your evening. Uh, I got a lot of sports. That's what I do. Squirt, squirt. Strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION. 20% off. Squirt, squirt. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, this is what you came for, kids. This is worth the free price of admission on podcast. StraightRazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Hmm. Oh, you rock it! Boy. New studio. Same old Jabes. Same old acoustics. Same old Jabes. I'm just the same old Jabes. Yeah, you are the same old Jabes. I really am. Proud of you. Proud of uh, straightrazors.com. Look, Father's Day. Kids, go get your father a kit from straightrazors.com. Be a good son, all right? Don't be the son that, you know. Sucks. Yeah, that he's (laughs) taping mask on when you're blackout drunk. And he's just like, I wish you were like this, my, my, my. Best friend's son. He loves me. He gets me nice stuff for Father's Day. Mm-hmm. You give me a nice little kit for Father's Day. Don't be like that, son. Be a good son. Go to straightrazors.com. They get everything you need to be a man in this world. Straight razors. Shaving cream. Beard oils. Mustache waxes. Uh, shampoos. Conditioners. Go to straightrazors.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. That's a, that's a big savings there. And that's good every time, even when it rains. Even when you it rains. You still can get it, even James. when it's raining. Yeah, when it's raining, you still order it. So, uh, you know, go out and do it. Go out and do it to it. Um, what's new in your, your whole world, James? Somebody wrote in and said, this, you don't ask Jesse enough about her life. Well, that's just across the board. Yeah. This yeah. is not something that you do. I do. I, I kind of know the answer, you know. What is it? Yeah, it's just a mixture of, of tired uh, slash exhausted. Uh-huh. That, that's kind of... It's kind of the whole thing, you know, I, I look, cause I feel, I feel bad when, when we have a, a, a young child, mm-hmm. they don't, they don't want the father for anything. Like, mm-hmm. uh, first word was mama out of the new one. Right. Child got sick. You had to go and go to the doctors and do the whole thing, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's hard. That's why I don't really bother you. I don't really ask you about your day. Cause I know what you're going to say. You're going to say it's shitty. It's kind of like so, people getting off airplanes. How was your flight? Doesn't matter. Yep. Um, I want to talk about this, uh, Soccer. Uh, Women's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Do you, well, yeah, so what you, have you, you heard? You what do that, you know? You watched that game yesterday. No, I don't watch soccer. People don't watch. And definitely not women's, right? No, not at all. They don't watch it, do they? No, they do, actually. They do? Not true. Not true, yeah. So if that's they, what's going on in your world, then I'll, I'll, I'll chat about it. Let's so do it. So are they watching it just as much? Yes. So, oh, okay. Uh, I, How oddly do you enough, feel about this 13-0? to 13 zero. Zero. I'll tell you exactly how I feel about it. I think it's fucking great. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. Um, we bitch all the time on this show about feminists and things like that, mm-hmm. where it's just like you're marching for the wrong reason or you're ruining shit mm-hmm. uh, by bitching about everything else. Like, uh, or that women are not equal to men in, in certain areas, mm-hmm. you know, which I, I don't know why we can't agree on those things. Right. Uh, the same statement can be made about women's soccer. Women's soccer is so much more fun to watch than men's soccer okay. USA. And okay. it has been for 25 years. I know it's more fun, but are they getting the same viewership, if not more? Yes. Like, is it really translating? It it is. Okay. Here's what isn't translating. The non-USA games aren't. Right. But when the women's team plays, people show out and they they show up. So, uh, perfect example. I'm on air yesterday uh, doing the sports show, Mm -hmm. doing Drinker Bro Sports, which airs every Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, Wednesday. Um, And... That the game was on as we were doing the show and I was reading off the scores. Like w- watching women's soccer is amazing. They're so skilled and they're so much more exciting to watch than USA men's soccer. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're watching like the World Cup for men's, right? The teams you want to see are like Brazil and France and Germany and those guys, right? I- I- I'd never want to watch U- United States players. They fucking suck. The women are incredible and they dominate and they don't give a shit. And so if you're going to talk shit like the women are, Mm -hmm. because look, as soon as the season's over, they immediately come out and they say, pay us as much as the men. We bring in more viewers. We bring in all this shit and we're better. We're just better. It's true. They okay. should be paid more than men in this in this particular sport in America because it's about putting asses in seats, butts in buckets. And with the women's team, they do a hundred percent deserve it. So if you... Tell me about it, about the WNBA. I'll tell you to get fucked all day. Sure. Now, you tell me this about women's soccer. That's the Absolutely. one place that we can say they actually are. Because that's the only thing, you know, when people say the wage gap between like Jennifer Lawrence and whatever yeah. or whatever. It's, it is putting butts in seats. It, yeah. And it's also not true. So like Jennifer Lawrence. Well, Jennifer Lawrence is the exception, but they're saying she's like. She's the exception, but like, dude, you take Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock got, I think, 30 for 30 million for, for Right, because she was. And People she was in gravity. She got out. like 30 million. And yeah. she gets like, if it just depends on who you are. It has nothing to do with you, a man or a woman. Is your personality enough to bring? people out to it's put asses in seats. It's the Sam Jackson, you know, way of thinking. hundred percent. Like, my job is to, you know, I get paid. Yes. According to the butts in the seats, not like what I did or yeah. how hard I worked or how hard I worked on this movie. That's not what translates. And uh, so I understand that. So they, the so controversy they, with this, yeah, is is that they won thirteen to zero. Their excessive uh, celebration after every single goal is hey. what everyone's talking about. So, so he, at a thirty-four, a ranked thirty-four team, Thailand is not known for soccer, and they were the lowest ranked, and they were happy to even be in the fucking competition. Right? Here's here's my position on that. Right. Y- y- and this is because, uh, again, uh, there was a bunch of, of journalists, even one guy after the game on the actual telecast. Yeah, there. This is the big controversy. And so with it. on the telecast, there's usually four of these talking heads afterwards. Mm. And, you know, they, they recap the game or whatever. The, the, the lead anchor on this, who's, who's leading the, the, the U.S. women's soccer coverage for ESPN, was just like, I thought that was classless or tasteless or whatever. And I thought they should have eased up. The other three, including I think it was Julie Foudy on that panel lit him up and said, fuck no, man, you're at the World Cup. Yeah. Um, this You work your entire life for to this. To get here, yeah. You should celebrate. You should score 100 goals. Um, they're not, in, in my opinion, the women's team is probably not the favorite in this tournament. Therefore, this opening game to make a statement like this puts the world on notice saying, hey, man, we just beat somebody 13-0, to zero, and if you think we're going to let our foot off the gas for any of you assholes, think again, dude. Um because I'll, I'll take it back to the dream team. I remember the first uh, dream team in like 92. I was a kid, right? For, for basketball. They assembled Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson and Larry Bird or whatever. 
they smash people by like 80 points, 100 points a game against these same thing. It was like a team like Thailand or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and they were just happy to be there. They, the men celebrated after every single play. They were throwing flashy dunks, mm. housing these people. They did not let up, and we celebrated it. That's the dream team. Yeah, the and that's the other thing time. they're saying is like you wouldn't tell a man's no, men's you wouldn't. And in this, to in this one celebrate, instance, I don't think they ever. Do. Yeah, in this one instance, like because like, you try to treat all these cases separately, right? In this case, no. I, absolutely not, man. The, the girls had every right to score third. I, I wanted to see them score more. Um, celebrate, yeah, well, the, score, dominate. Like the this score, is a long tournament. I don't tournament. think is the issue because you know you need to score a bunch because if it does come to a tie, yeah, in the goals. end you're gonna go back to the goal. So the goal is like the amount of goals is not the issue. It's the when you're getting into like goal twelve, goal thirteen, we're still jumping to the middle jumping on each other like being crazy okay 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 i, I just think it. there's a point to be made about both Sportsmanship. ways both I- ways but yeah of course you're fucking excited like this may be the only time that you're able to ever score that much on a fucking team yeah um because now you're going against chile and sweden and it may not be the same situation for you and I, with the, the world cups like every four years so like if you think about it some of these women will be too old um, you know, you have to try out for the team every single year. Right. So it's not like, oh, hey, just because you were on it, you get to go back yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Like you might not ever get to play ever again. And like we saw with Kevin Durant the other night in the NBA finals, that's the finals, man. That's as far as you can go. The, you know, people were bitching about uh, the Warriors playing him too early, and that's why he tore his Achilles or whatever. I can I can promise you this as a player. That's he what you play the game for. Play. Yeah, yeah that, that's yeah, the yeah. championship. Yeah. Same with the women. This yeah. is the championship. This is the World Cup. This is what you play for every four years. This is your one moment of recognition around the world. If you want to score and celebrate, by all means, do it. I was amped to see it. And uh, if you that don't like poor it. poor tie goalie. Hey. Oh, I mean, just so she, that, not that shit couldn't stop a, She couldn't stop a fucking beach ball. She but, looked... Uh, a little older too. She looked like a little Asian grandma. Yeah, little Thai grandma. They probably pulled her right out of the Robert Kraft sitch and threw her in goal. Just threw her right in there. Who knows? I don't care either way. I don't care either. I'm USA just... all day. Yeah, all right. Uh, for these women, um, and it is exciting I to watch. Guest, you would have said that. And again, like because I'm doing the sports show, and we we usually have stats and notes and all that stuff pulled up on the computer. Same here with 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 this show. You know, we usually have bullet points and things we want to we want to chat about and everything else. Um, when I was watching that, you know, the, the game was on in the corner of my screen. I was just, oh, my God. Yeah. Scored another goal. He right. Scored another goal. I just kept saying that over and over again. And right. I was like, oh, wow. Even in stoppage time, you know, they have, it's, it's a 90-minute game, two 45-minute halves. And at the end, there's some form of injury or, uh, you know, a player's down or whatever. They'll usually add a couple minutes, and it's called stoppage time, right? Mm-hmm. So I saw the score was 12-0. There was, like, two minutes of stoppage time added. And um, I put my computer away and didn't think about it. And I came home. And then uh, uh, when I came home, I walked in the door and I saw it scrolling at the bottom of the screen. that They had put another goal in and stoppage time. Oh, I get yeah. a great, great chuckle out of that. Uh, and again, look, it, it, on the other side of it, if the women aren't good enough and somebody's able to hang 13 on them, we deserve it. I'm not yeah, going to call absolutely. another country a bad sport or whatever. If France ends up hanging 13 on us, Go on and man, do better. We oui, we. Oui. If you don't like the if if you don't like the the way shit's happening, do better. That that's pretty much all you can say at that point. So okay, we'll see. But I, yeah, it is better. It's more fun to watch. So if you're out there, give it a shot. Throw on women's soccer uh, during this World Cup. Not these early games are you're gonna be steamrolling people, and that's yeah, fine. Yeah. But in the in the later rounds, man, it's it's tight. Uh, it's three, two. I, I'll, I'll still, I still remember that girl tearing off her shirt and she yeah. had the sports bra on, yeah. uh, who was Brandy Chastain or, mm-hmm. uh, what was that in the nineties? Like that, I mean, again, just housing the men for a very, a very long time. Now. Yeah. You're looking That's at That's one thing where you can kind of be like, Hey, this is what it is Yeah, to, to, to need to get paid more is we're actually getting Better viewers, better soccer. Reviews, you're you're yeah. getting better products. Um, I, I don't even know if you know this, but in the last in the men's World Cup, the United States men did not even qualify. Yeah, they that didn't makes even get sense. to. They didn't even get yeah, to play. Yeah, yeah. So Thai, they weren't even a Thailand. Right. 
They didn't even make it at all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how do you not make a tournament? Landon Donovan, shit ass Landon Donovan made a commercial that was pretty controversial where he was saying, go Mexico. Because uh-huh. the United States was not in it. So he's like, I want to root for somebody, oh, go oh, Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, no, dude. <laughs> Do better. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Be sad about it. Root for Mexico. Yeah. That's crazy. So we want our players to be serious. You know, we don't want them to be like, Not ah, we don't ever want them to be like, well, no big. So let's just root for someone else. We want you to be devastated, crying. Yeah. You know, we want you to be like, fuck. Be into it, dude. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I saw, I saw that whole controversy to me. I blew it off. Or it was just like, Hey, cool, man. Yeah. Uh, they're an awesome team. Those chicks are rad. Like, let them roll. Yeah. Let them roll. And hopefully that carries over into you it know, was a lot the next of rounds. Women and men saying it. It was both. I, yeah. I, I look, I, I heard it all. I, I read it all. I don't give a shit. Um, you know, I, it was probably 50 50 in the press. Yeah. Over what it was. And, you know, as an athlete, like, no, you're out there to score and do your best. Um, you know, if it's football where you can stop the clock and run the ball. It's a different sport where you have soccer is constantly moving over and right. over and over again. So you can't just put your foot on the ball and then everybody's going to run the clock out. Like it's not how it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, football. You can, you can just run the clock out and do it. Soccer. You can't. So you might as well score, move on with your day. Um, I want to talk about uh, the Hollywood movies that are, that are out right now. Okay. This is the worst year in box office in 20 years. The, the worst. What do you mean? Um, every, all of these movies are bombing. And I think the, ne- the reason why I wanted to chat about it was I think the next one, and they're worried, Hollywood's worried, you know, that, that it's Netflix or whatever. To me, it's just shitty movies. Godzilla 90, what's the 90th iteration of Godzilla just Yeah, came it's out? like the Spider-Man situation. It bombs. Like, well, Spider-Man's still doing well. So, I know, but what is, it just keeps. It just keeps going, but Godzilla bombed. Uh, and yeah. they, they can't figure out oh Has Godzilla God. ever done well? N- no Besides the very first one in black and white or whatever I don't think so in America I don't think so um, So I can't, you know I, I can't I can't understand why they keep making it, I guess um, And they put the girl from Stranger Things in it Okay. And that was supposed to help. And it Maybe was like, it's for China. Does it do well over there? That's what I thought. And then I looked at the numbers over there and they weren't that great. So it's mm-hmm. going to take a huge loss. Um, that uh, Dark Phoenix movie just came out over the weekend, which was the 90th X Men one. No. Bombed. Really? Miserably. I like that gal. Uh, I, that I did little too. whatever. I did Sophie, too. But it, something. it wasn't titled as an X Men movie. It was titled as the Dark yeah. Phoenix. And like, I don't know what that is. Yeah, they did. I saw really... Jennifer Lawrence kind of doing press for it, where it was just like. she. I think everyone was. It's the same kind of thing. You show up, you do it, you know, you do your scene in a. In a big movie and. In and a day, bounce. and you just don't know where they're going to use it. Like that Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Gwyneth um, Paltrow being like, was that Spider Man? So the, the the next one was Men in Black, and this is what I wanted to talk about actually. So um, the Men in Black movie is back. Men in Black International comes out this weekend. I think who that's going to bomb. Who were the men in it? Well, there's one man. Oh, and then now there's a woman. Um, oh, because God forbid. Sure. You you have two men in a movie called Men in Black. Um, right, 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 right. So it's a chick. I don't know the chick's name. It, she looks like one of the girls from Dark Mirror. You know what? She's from Westworld. The black chick. Um, I don't know. I don't know if she is or not. She's either, from Westworld. Either way. Um, but not funny. You're probably wrong on that, but I'm not sure. Um, either way. She's from Westworld, but that's okay. You, you got know a Hemsworth my, in there. Well, you know my facial recognition. Is, Are you is going against it? That's eh, pretty good. The, I, the, the chick in Westworld is Thandie Newton, though. I know her. The black chick? Yeah. So uh, th- th- this, this girl's a little younger, but uh, either way, um, they, they're putting like dude perfect music behind it in the, in the commercials and in the ads and stuff. Uh-huh. And it's like, I mean, they're really trying, you know, that la 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 la. <laughs> everybody, yeah. everybody with kids, anybody with kids out there knows. Not that girl from Westworld. Music. Which one? She's like the owner of the company. She kind of comes in randomly later. Oh, Yeah. Hot, like seducing people. Anyway, you, you won. Your facial recognition it really is unmatched, James. Go ahead. Um, that I think that's gonna bomb, and uh, everybody's asking why. And like you know, 
I think Dan was over at the house the other night because they were playing. They've been gassing these commercials during the NBA Finals, right? For the this Men in Black International, mm -hmm. and uh, and he goes, "Who the fuck's gonna see this?" And I was like, "That it wasn't supposed to be that." I can tell you what it was. Uh, so uh, behind the scenes at, at like in Hollywood, they were trying to do a crossover movie between Twenty One Jump Street and Men in Black, where Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum get bumped up to whatever that okay. secret agent thing is. And then they team up with Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. And it was going to be a crossover between a men in black 21 jump street. Cause they both, I think it's Sony who, who owns both of those franchises. And then they were going to make that, that would have made it a fuck ton of money. Yeah. They couldn't figure out, I guess, how to put the script together. Um, which or makes sense. Like that's a weird crossover yeah and to not be cheesy and to get all of them on board and yeah and uh and the schedules and all that other stuff um so whatever man they did yeah it. And yeah then, and, and then, then they came this, up with this and then they get this yeah they're like oh hey we got the men in black international let's let's party let's party with, with with barbie on this one no you shouldn't have partied with barbie on this one no you should have you should have backed away from this one because this one's gonna i mean tank um, that John Wick three didn't do well either. Do, does it ever do well here? I don't know that it ever does well here. Like, I, I know the first one was kind of like this beloved, like you know, yeah, cult movie, and then boom, they did a sequel, and the sequel did really well. Mm -hmm. um, but this, the third, I, I don't know, third one's not doing well. I think um, maybe Canal is doing too much press for it. I don't know. We'll we'll get to him in a second because he's become like a meme now, like. He's been for a while. Keanu leaves. Um, but then you have uh, Secret Life of Pets 2 that didn't do well, which was, that was surprising to me. Yeah, because that's a kid's movie. Uh, Rocket Man. Man is not doing well at all. And uh, I haven't, well, here's the thing. I haven't heard a bad review out of it. Okay. Uh, just that it's not doing well. Just that it's not doing well. Um, and they were trying to, you know, sum it up and all there's a there was a, a million articles they're trying to sum it up and figure out why and they were like well i should have had the same magic as bohemian rhapsody i was like man bohemian rhapsody was shitty yeah what do you mean the same magic it looks like it has more magic i know uh, um and they were saying you know because it's r and that i guess there's a graphic like gay love scene in it that people might not go see or whatever and uh one reviewer which again, we know man, a couple people, people are, that wouldn't people are fucking crazy but this one reviewer was just like you know, I, I'm tired of seeing biopics where people have drinking and drug problems. Hey, man, newsflash. <laughs> uh, if, you're, if you're making any movie about any musician, there's going to be drug and that, alcohol and abuse. It in there. was there. It's like the classic like Ray Charles biopic. I didn't really like how the brother died. <laughs> okay, well, that was in it. That, Do you know what life. I mean? Like, that's yeah. his life. That's what we're doing. So... I didn't like when he went blind in that movie. I, it was it really was good, but it would have been so much more fun if he could see, huh? Imagine if he could see oh, these yeah. people. That's how I would have done it, I think. Um, so yeah, I look. I, I don't. I don't know, man. I, I just I, I think it's a, a bad year for movies. Mm -hmm. I don't really necessarily think that how you know theatrical movies are dying, but you've got to take a risk. Um, the one, there's two movies on the horizon where you can really take a look at and then decide for yourself. Uh, yesterday, which comes out in two weeks, yep, um, which is looks amazing. And looks you know, we, I know we talked about the Beatles last episode. Um, a lot of people looking up uh, that song that you kept referencing over and over again on there. Um, this this is the Danny Boyle who did uh, uh, 128 Hours and the Beach and all that stuff. This is his new movie, mm -hmm. and it's about a guy who wakes up in a world where no one knows what the Beatles are, and then he becomes... And he knows he all their songs. He sings and plays songs all their songs. And, yeah. The trailers look amazing. It's a great concept. Danny Boyle is one of the direct, best directors on the planet. I think you, you can look at a movie like this and say, all right, if this doesn't do well. Then we're in trouble. We're in trouble. And then the, the, your final nail in that coffin could be if Tarantino's yeah. movie doesn't do well, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That would be it, wouldn't it? Yeah, because then what do you do? Tarantino's movies don't do well. Whew, the last one didn't. And I, I look, it was the hateful eight. I personally loved it. The we knock said, on that was that it was, you know, all in one 
it was a different and one thing storytelling wise and acting wise i don't know how you get better than that it was an offshoot from what he normally does so if if yeah i thought it was rad either right. way really looking forward to that movie but that look that was just a can and uh it didn't win any awards so the the feedback i've heard is that it's a great movie it's probably his most emotional Ambitious, movie yeah um, and they said Brad Pitt and DiCaprio could be nominated, but they said the, the, the thing that keeps popping up in these reviews is they said it requires, it's going to require multiple viewings. And I don't know what that means. Uh, hopefully it's in a po- Pulp Fiction like way, but that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, I yeah. Cause whenever I hear that, that's a trigger. <laughs> that's a trigger. Brother. I'm triggered. Yeah, where it's just like, oh no, multiple viewings. Like, you know, like, for, what does that even to make it good? At yeah. That point? To make like, it good or to, you know, there's one thing to, to want to go back to a movie and be like, oh, I want to like see things that I didn't yeah, see yeah. before. But if you have to do that, I don't know. So we'll see. I, I don't know what the feedback, but again, everybody says it's, it's good. So, but they were like, oh, it requires multiple viewings. And I'm like, ugh. I, ba- I barely have time to watch one movie. Really? Let alone multiple viewings. Sure. Of one. Um, you know, if it's, if it's Tombstone, obviously. D- Daddy's saddling up for 30, 40 views on that thing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but not because you have to, because you want to. Not because like. Yeah. So it requires multiple views? I don't know. Now, that's not something you want to hear. I know. That's, that's not a glowing review. That's, uh, that's what happens. That's what's happened. It's like Big Lebowski. Yeah. It's not that great the first time you see it. But by the fifth time, you're loving it. And that's true. But that didn't do well. And no, that's not bombs. a good way to it like. Bombs. You know, yeah. you're right. Thinking about that right now, like, because I love Big Lebowski now. Now. The first time the I first saw, time saw it, saw I do 100%. It? I was like, ugh. What is this fucking shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, the first time I saw it, my one of my best friends from Ohio State, his you know, his sister, his Tara, Tara Reed. Yeah. Um, oh, right. She was in it, and that was her first movie. And so we went and saw it in the theater. She was already in L.A., and we were in college or whatever. And uh, I did, I just, I didn't get it. It was, yeah. it was, uh, it was too advanced for my small mind at the time. And then you know, third or fourth time around, I was like. This, this is the greatest movie it. ever, yeah. I get it. Um, and maybe that's it. Maybe. maybe that's it. I'm, I guess I'm okay with that, but gosh, I don't have the same kind of time I did back in the Big Lebowski days. Do you know what I mean? Where I could just keep popping on the movie until I get it and love it. I don't have time for that. No. So. Don't. But uh, look, I'm still going to see the Tarantino movie opening. Yeah, I gotta get to, I got to get to Rocket Man. I've begged you. You fought I'm me scared. for two weeks of I'm going scared. to see Rocket Man. I might have just why go. Why is nobody seeing it? Uh, some friends have seen it, but why is it not doing well? Because we had a we had a date we had a date night last week, and I was like, "Hey, let's go pop into Rocket Man." You were like, "No." What did I say? I don't remember. I said we spend all of our time. Oh yeah, in, yeah, front, yeah. in of front of a screens. computer yes, scene, yes. like. Our time is fractured and distracted. We're either talking over the phone, in front of the TV, in front of the thing. So the last thing I want to do when I have a second Mm -hmm. with my husband that I sometimes like is... Sometimes. And sometimes don't. Yeah. And that's just the, you know, life. (laughs) But I want to be able to talk to you and not just sit in front of another fucking screen. I, I get it. So I'm gonna have, I might have to pop on out to Rocket Man by myself, kind of take that in because I want to tell. And you, I kind of want to go by myself too. You know? Oh, you do too. I mean, doesn't that sound amazing? To go to Rocket Man, just like popcorn, candy, like just watch a movie by yourself. James, I again, I offered to to take you there, and I don't uh, want to go with you. Cool. We'll go see it on different times. You know what times. I mean? I'm if I have that. that much time where it's like, if I go by myself, I'm not worried about paying a babysitter, right? Yeah. You know? No, I, I, I get it. There's something about I get it. getting the babysitter, getting that time off, da, 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 and then just going into a dark theater. <laughs> I can't do it. Like, I want to uh, shoot, you know, shoot me. Yeah. I want to talk to you. That'll change. Yeah. That'll change. You should cherish that while I actually do want to hang out with you. When do you think it's going to change? soon <laughs> you get a year you get a ballpark in a year that's a long time 
What? Oh, a year. A year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It'll probably six months. Six yeah. months, would you say? Yeah. 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 All right. We'll check it out. Uh, the last thing I want to chat about today is uh, this this Chicago Tower, man. This is your worst nightmare. What is it? <laughs> this is your worst nightmare. You ever go up to those sky decks that are made of glass? Oh yes, I love them. Y- yeah, I'm 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 afraid of heights. Honestly, mm-hmm. I hate them, and I. I always think to myself, I'm like, man, you know, you're just dangling over these people. What happens mm. if that happens? If that breaks or just somebody falls through and then I all of a sudden it. all, you know, 15 of you just go. Uh, it happened today. Oh, my God. The sky deck started cracking. Underneath this is all your worst their, nightmare. Oh, I, Not mine. To the to the on the 103rd floor. One hundred and third. And it just starts shattering like a windshield and i mean people are scrambling to get off yeah so the protective top splintered into like a thousand pieces they're saying Uh, the picture of it is pure insanity if you get a if you get a chance to look at it we were just like oh my gosh um so uh now the the tower is saying that this is willis tower they're saying no one was ever in danger because the protective layer did what it was supposed to do sure um, but there, w- there was a woman and two kids. Get anybody back out there again. Right I around dare there. You. They, yeah, they were right outside of there. And uh, um, they were just about to go on, I guess. And the woman was just like, look, I'm scared of heights in general. So when I saw that happen, I was like, nope, not going yep. out, out there. Not doing that th- whole thing. Oh, boy. Yeah. Because you always wonder, like, does that protective glass actually work? Turns out it does, Turns James. Turns out it does. Turns out it so does. So once again, I feel safe. Yeah, so yeah, pop on out there. One of my favorite things to do, the ghost bar, the palms, which yeah. I've oh, yeah, been yeah. to in I've many, time, many, yeah. many years. Yeah. But walking out on that little, and it's only a little area, yep. enough for like two or three people. But looking straight down, sure, whew, I love it. Big fan. Love it. Yeah, you're, you, you're. Have you done it? Yeah, yeah. Can't believe you did it. Were you super well, drunk? I, I, no, I went to the opening. Yeah, but how did someone I went get the, you out? Onto here, here's the, the thing. So I went to the grand opening and I did not, you walk out and there's, you know, you're looking at tables and bars and all that stuff. And you're like, oh, because you can see the glass uh, around it, you know, and you're like, oh, I wonder, you know, is this underneath something? I, I didn't know it wasn't underneath anything. And then I get out there and was like, oh, shit, huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we're, uh, mm-hmm. we're doing this on the grand opening, you know, where yeah. it's just like, look, if it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong with the grand opening of course people and that's standing on the it for headline the first time yeah yeah ever yeah. and i was like cool i was good for a drink or two out there and then after that i i bet you weren't good pop, popped yeah. it on back in um yeah i i i cruised on back in sure the sure. safest i've felt at one of those things was uh the empire state building you ever go to the top of that no yeah so if you go to the top of that there is no like look see over or glass floor or whatever like you can't even get that close. No, right? yeah, and there's yeah, like yeah. A, a cage, this you know bars yeah, yeah. or whatever that go. It goes like all the way up. Yeah, yeah, so you can't even climb that thing or whatever. So when you're up there, you're like, ah, I can chill out here. I can have you know a Sammy, sure, a Sambone, you know, uh, some something like that out here. Like that's that's all fine and good, but uh, the rest of it, man, I don't I don't get down on that. I mean, my fear of heights is so bad that it's like I thought you know. I wrote it into a movie to conquer it. It was with you, actually. Um, mm-hmm. It was in 50K and a Call Girl, with the skydiving. And I was like, all right. Yeah. And then we did, did the helicopter tour of the Grand Canyon. And I was like, if I write this in to, a, to, to a movie and I physically have to do it, like, um, that'll, because everybody says, oh, you'll get over it after that. No. no. Like, no. Nothing changed. Nothing <laughs> changed at all. You didn't face your fears and now you're not. Uh, right, yeah, like yeah. For, even on the skydiving thing, I was just like, man, can this be over? Like, I'm good. I, I think it was part of, part, part of it was that. The other part was um, we were going in tandem because it was my first time. Right. And I had another man's dick and ball smashed into my back. Um, right. I think that, that had something to do with that it. That part of it. And I felt like maybe he got hard a little bit mm-hmm. um, just because he was with me. Right. Obviously, and you feel some... And you could feel that? Well, if, if you're, you know, grabbing a man that, that powerful... That was the real like, danger of it, yeah. Yeah, I think he got a fear boner, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I love those jokes, they, the jokes they all crack, right? You were just like, shut the fuck up. 
Me? Yeah, yeah, it was nuts. You were just like, we're good on that. I think nope. you even said that. After, we're good on the death jokes, guys. After the uh, the the 90th death joke. Or and, like, and who don't, packs, we don't know if we, who packed the shoe. Who packed your shoe? Ooh, was it me? Yeah. Uh, Oops, we forgot it. After that, I was I was all good on that whole. Sure. You said, I see what you're doing and I want it to stop. <laughs> it's not helping me or anyone. <laughs> Uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? We shall. I'm gonna, dude. I'm gonna throw this out to uh, the the OG female soccer player who was the the, in my opinion, the best to ever do it. Um, and that was uh, Mia Hamm. Mia Hamm's really the one who kicked off this whole shit and yeah. was doing the commercials, doing the you know the Gatorade campaigns and all that stuff. Like making it, she was cool. dominant, man. Yeah, yeah, she was she was like our Pele. Uh, from this country, and pro- probably if you're looking at men and women, right? Dead serious. I'm being completely honest here. She's probably the best soccer player, man or woman, that's come out of this country, hands down. Mia Hamm. Okay. And uh, I believe the best soccer player here is a woman for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, look, yeah. 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 She yeah. She was great. Yeah. Um, now again, if the women's scrimmage the men's team, I don't even know that result. To be honest with you, I really don't. I don't know how yeah, it shakes Yeah, because out. it's not necessarily about all the things that, you know. Skill and you can't, you know. Skill or tackling her, or yeah. strength. It's like, it's thought being, you know, thoughtful endurance. Like, I don't know, muscle memory. And it's, she. It's things that we can actually go up against. Yeah, she, she was also uh, one of the first. Uh, she became one of the first uh, power couples in sports. She ended up marrying uh, Nomar Garcia Parra. Oh, dang. Yeah, so like the two of them. Right. Because he was at his height, she was at her height, and like the two of them just crushed. Right. So, um, so that was rad. And, and, uh, and yeah, man, to, uh, to all the ladies out there, you kill the men in soccer. So score 80 next game. I don't give a shit. Um, run it up, you know? And make them pay you. Yeah. Make them pay you. True. Because uh, that, that's, there is no justification for getting paid less for being the best in a tournament and then the, the men can't even make it. Yeah. Fuck them. True. Fuck the, fuck it's those true. dudes. Uh, get them out of here. Women's takeover. Go watch uh, some, some, some ladies soccer uh, during this world cup. And that, I think it'll really change your mind. Dead serious, man. It's, it's great to watch. Um, and that's, that's coming from somebody who, who does a sports show weekly. Like it, it, it's a blast uh, for Jesse Wiseman, AKA the Jables. I am Ross Patterson. Subscribe on YouTube for the video show. Good night, everyone. Good night.